today for so our online excited. experience yes exactly and we are just so ready for what god's doing in this place mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. are just ready for what he's doing yeah 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 we're guys we're pumped that you're here um don't forget guys invite your friends yes. invite your family invite your mama your grandmama anybody you can think of um just go ahead and, and send them this link or like just be like yo something cool's going on online i want you to see it because god is doing sick sick things um and in our chat yeah <laughs> yeah, in our chat, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to blow up our chat with where, where you're from, like what's going on in your life, how, like, how we can be praying for you. Or if you see something cool, be like some praise hands, or like, oh, like, amen, like really cool. Um, don't forget any of that, guys, because we want to communicate with Tell you. us where you're from right now. Yeah, yeah. See what, the, the different places where yeah. people are tuning in from. But we're going to jump back into worship. So let's get on up and get ready to praise the Lord. Yes. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus And your voice is calling me out Right now, I know you're able And my God, come through again you You never lost a battle, no, you've never lost a battle, and I know, I know you never will. Everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now, breaking my heart of stone. Taking over like it's Jericho And my walls are all crashing down And right now I know you're able And my God come through again You can do all things You can do you never 
I give you glory for all you've brought me through And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you Coming by faith, I 
Yo, what's going on everybody? We're excited to be with you today in the house of the Lord, in your house. We're excited to communicate with you, chill with you. It's gonna be a good time. Yes, thank you so much for being here. Hey, we wanna remind you guys about our updates page. That's viafresno.com slash updates. So make sure you're checking that out this mm -hmm. week. It's all things VIA, including we want you guys to send your prayers in. There's yeah. a prayer request form on there. Mm -hmm. We want to back you guys up. And we also want to hear what awesome things God is doing in your life right now. Yeah, guys. And with that, we just encourage you to continue with your regular giving. Yes. We believe that God will bless 100% of what you give in your heart. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can go to viafresno.com slash give. You can do text to give, or you can go to the Via Fresno app and press the give button, guys. It'll just walk you through super easy, super simple. And we believe that whatever you give on your heart, like I said, 100% of it will be blessed and God will multiply it and do amazing things with it. Yes, most definitely. And also parents, again, we have Via Kids. Make sure you're logging on to see the new episodes yeah. every single week. Mm -hmm. You can go on viafresno.com slash live, wow. and that will be available for you guys on that page. Yeah, guys, and, and with that, we're gonna continue on with the message. But before that, Via Music has just released a single, yes. and it was good, that yes. is the title. I'm not just saying it was good because it is good. It's fire, it's <laughs> yeah. flames. Guys, listen to it, share it with your friends and family. You're gonna be blessed by it, guys. We love you so much. We hope you have a great day. God bless you. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to Via Church Online. Uh, my name is Jordan. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, I wanna just welcome uh, everybody, wherever you're joining us from, whether it's in your home, whether it's on your phone. Uh, we're so glad that you're hanging out with us today here uh, for Via Church Online. And um, you know, today is a special day in the sense that it is Via Church's birthday. And so happy birthday, Via. We are seven years old. Let's go. <laughs> Seven years old. Can you believe how fast time flies? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Gianna, you were just saying that you've been here six years, that yeah. you joined, committed to VIA on our first birthday. Yeah, it's amazing how, how fast time flies. And Shane, you were there on day one, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> day one. After the day one. Uh, so happy birthday and shout out to uh, just everybody who's been here since the beginning. We love you guys and everybody who's joined us along the way and everybody who's joined us since we've been online. Um, it's just been incredible to see God start this thing for his kingdom that's been moving. And so we just want to say welcome to you. And we believe that today is a special day, not just because it's our birthday, and, but it's a, a, a day because we want to talk about something really, really important. And um, we want to, I guess, use our birthday as a sense to not say let's celebrate maybe even what God has done through V in the past. But I think we want to talk about some things that we're excited that he might do in the future in his kingdom and through the work of Jesus and the church. And um, gosh, it's been a crazy couple weeks. Yeah. It's been a crazy couple months and a real intense past couple days um, and week and week and a half. And, uh, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to invite some of my friends and some of our team and leaders here not to have a sermon not to uh, uh, have an interview, but just a conversation. And so I'll be really honest, we don't know where this is going in this moment. 
um, we don't have a plan. We're just here to talk, like as children of God and with humility uh, to just maybe, uh, you know, learn a few things, maybe see how we can grow yeah. and see where Jesus has a place in all of this, yeah. um, in, in the, the things that we're facing as a community and in our world. And so uh, I just want to introduce you guys to my friends. Uh, first over here is Shane Blaze. And um, if you, you've never met Shane, he's an amazing guy. We went, we're actually from the same small hometown in Chowchilla. Okay. And um, he's been with us since the beginning. And, and if you never met him or don't know much about him, uh, he is one of our lead staff uh, here at Via Church. And yet he leads so many ways behind the scenes. So you don't always see him, but today we got him on camera. And so I want to thank you, Shane, for being here. And what people really don't understand a lot, too, about Via Church is that oftentimes I get credit for things that maybe are good about our church that Shane has done. Uh, and so I want to give you some credit, dude, just because you're awesome. Uh, the way that you take uh, the message of the gospel and your heart is to um, direct the culture of how we do things so that we're a church that gives that hope to every kind of person. You're really good at it. And uh, in fact, both of our leaders right here are a part of your team and your ministries uh, because of the relationships you've had in the past. And um, I just think you're an amazing leader. And uh, as we have this conversation today, I'm glad that, that you're here. And then Gianna. Mm -hmm. Gianna is an incredible leader, both on camera and off camera, mm -hmm. on stage, off stage. Um, you are a, let's see, you're an event uh, planner, mm -hmm. okay, by trade, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you're a wife. And you're a, a mother of an amazing, beautiful little girl, yeah. right? Uh, she real cute. She's, she's real, real cute. cute. Yeah. And besides all those things, you're also just a leader in the kingdom. You're a leader at our church. And so people have seen you on stage singing as a worship leader. Uh, they've seen you, you know, um, whether it's announcements on camera or whatever that looks like. And then also what people don't realize is Gianna has been a communication coach for us. She literally has coached me, okay? Yeah. So uh, she has coached me in communication, and I just really value you for who you are as a leader. And I've learned from you, and I really appreciate the things that you've taught me. So I love you, and I'm glad that you're here, too. Thanks. And then uh, Alejandro. Alejandro, uh, so here's the thing. Alejandro is a uh, manager at Apple. And you're also a pastor here at Via Church. You preach. I mean, I think you preached a couple weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the thing, okay, so when, when people talk about churches, sometimes they, they talk about the beloved senior pastor. You know what I love about Via Church? We don't have that. Like, Alejandro, you're like the beloved pastor of our church, dude. Like, everybody's always talking about getting a hug from Alejandro. You got the best hugs. I got them saved up. You, you know, got them, yes. Yeah. This is like a bunch of them just for, you know, back day to two months. It's fine. Good. But I just love you, bro. Uh, from the, the, the moment I met you, um, you, you showed up at Via Church when it was still in our house, yeah. kind of checking it out. And then over a process of time, uh, we ended up getting, you know, the blessing of having you on our team. And you're an incredible, gifted leader, a loving investor in people and a great preacher of God's word. And um, I just know in this season, you know, so last week was like one of the hardest weeks for me to ever uh just be a pastor to be honest just because feeling the weight of what's going on in people's lives and just a little context you know last week we shared a message that was all about coronavirus mm -hmm. and we we filmed it early we filmed it on tuesday and then i was going to go out of town um, to go just invest in my family and this is when kind of uh, things uh, as far as uh, on Tuesday became more aware, at least in the public, of what happened to George Floyd. Yeah. So, so it was like things were unraveling in real time, but we had filmed a message before that. Yeah. I was out of town trying to be off my phone, and then by the weekend, things were getting so intense that when, it, and then it came to Sunday, and we're, we're airing this message that we had put so much time, creative energy in, but things had changed so much yeah. that I was watching church at home sweating sweating because I was like I know there are people hurting and I feel like I don't have this opportunity to speak to what you know needs to be spoken in that moment and so here's the thing we're, we're pre-recording again today and the reality is things could change by Sunday we don't know what but here's here's the truth here's why I'm okay saying let's pre-record this 
because the issue that we're going to talk about today hasn't changed in years and years. It's not going to change by the weekend. It doesn't matter if something else makes national head, headlines or whatever and maybe de, you know, changes the conversation of what happened to George Floyd and so many others, injustices and stuff like that. It's like, we need to talk about it. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. do this. And, um, and so uh, you are my friends that I thought we could have a valuable conversation with. And I just want to open the conversation. I guess I'll, I'll ask you just, man, because when things like this happen, let's just be yeah. real, yeah. you feel it very differently than I do. Yeah. And people on the camera or at home right now listening on their, their, their phone are all experiencing it differently, yeah. the events that have taken place in the last couple of weeks. And so I, I just think as so many people at home who, whether they look like you, you, you or me yeah. are going to feel things differently, but they are led by you, by us. And I want our people to know, how do you feel? Like, how are you, beloved Alejandro, Gianna, and Shane, like, I, like it's, it's we, 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 we all experience this different, like, yeah. for a, a young black man, yeah. right, or a young black woman, with what's going on, like, I just want to start the conversation and go, dude, tell, tell the church. Yeah. Dude, how are you, man? Um, I think that the, the best way to describe it would be I feel a heaviness that I have never felt um, in the entirety of my life in this time. And I think it's magnified by a lot of different factors. I think that, like you said, Racism hasn't stopped, um, it hasn't shifted. By the time people see this message, it's something that has not, um, it's not gonna ebb away. Um, and even in the midst of the coronavirus, we have people that are at home and it seems like our world has like paused, right? We have weddings that have paused, we have funerals that have paused, we have sporting events that's paused, we have all these different areas of life that have stopped and yet this didn't stop mm. and wow the fact that for me like George Floyd was the the climactic moment that started with Ahmaud Arbery mm. and then went to Breonna Taylor and then George Floyd so with all of this happening in the time of being within my house looking at the world continuing to kill black people you know right. and that heaviness is something that is so like i can feel it in my house yeah i feel it when i so many different avenues but at the same time of that heaviness because i know jesus there has there's hope at the same time right so I would say a mixture of heaviness and hopefulness because as long as I'm still breathing, there's still an opportunity to change mm. things, right? And we have to right. approach every single day with, with that strength as a black man because if I don't rest in that, there, there's no way I would be here. There's no way I could have this conversation. There's no way that I would be able to be present with you guys, be present for my family, be present for right. my job. Um, so yeah, heavy but hopeful, yep. I would say. And I'll just say too, thank you guys for being here today. Like I think what a lot of people might not realize is this is not an easy conversation and this is not an easy place to be given the state of emotion as well, just coming in this moment right now. And so I just, I'm so grateful that you're just here even in this moment right now. And, and Gianna, I ask you like, how are you girl? Yeah, I mean, hearing, I get emotional already, but just seeing it and just hearing his name makes my heart sink. And um, yeah, it's really heavy. And even though this has been going on for 400 plus years in even avenues that we don't even know, yeah. just what we've been educated about. And just to see someone so willingly do that just to an, a black person or a person in general, is really hard because I think of, of my future son, if I have one, and like what's he gonna face when he walks out? I think about my dad who's black. What's he gonna face when he walks out? 
how am I gonna have this conversation with Lily? Yeah. And, and properly educate her on like how to treat people and how our people are so oppressed yeah. and have been for so long and it hasn't changed, you know? And, and there's like just a lot of different scenarios going on with it and a lot of people wonder why why are they so mad? And it's mm. it's because it enough's enough yeah. at this point. Right. We've been mad. We've yeah, been mad. Sure. We just haven't been heard. We haven't been right. seen. And racism's not new. You see it all over. Racism's not new. It's being filmed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And who knows all the different things that we have not seen yeah. right. before all of yeah. the social media and camera phones and smartphones and all that stuff and so it's been it's been up and down for sure and you said it, it was hard for you to watch Sunday's service even though it was so good but like when uh, we did flood the earth we didn't know that we were gonna have a service like this for the following week but we did flood the earth and I lost it oh. and that's like God's love needs to flood yes. this earth and and man like that was an awakening for me because I was I was in a place of just like, I don't know if I can use this word, but festivity. You know, I was pissed off. I was so mad. And then now, like, like I'm doing a lot better, still hurting, but a lot better because I can look at it in God's eyes and what he has going to, what he's going to work out mm. in this time, you know. Yeah. And it's all being brought to the surface for, for a reason. Wow. I think uh, it's so crazy what you said is that racism hasn't changed, it's just being filmed, right? And it's so important to, to understand that this is an experience that I walk through every single day, right? Mm. There are things that I experience in my life and have experienced in my life that cause me to approach everything differently. I approach how I walk into a bank. Mm -hmm. I approach ensuring that I'm wearing like business casual type of attire because if I'm seen in something that could be seen as not that, mm -hmm. then the service I might get is not gonna be something that's gonna assist me when I'm just trying to do the normal thing of mm -hmm. depositing a check, wow. right? Or just the idea of walking in my neighborhood. Like I, rem I remember I was in college and I, was riding a longboard home from Fresno State. Um, and I was riding with a man that would become my best man. Um, and we were stopped by a police officer and asked us where we were going. Hmm. Why are we in this neighborhood? Wow. And there is nothing that I can do or say in that moment that is going to allow that police officer to know the content of my character. Right. To understand that I love Jesus. The right. fact that I am a kind, caring, mm. sacrificing yeah. man. Right. He sees me and the possibility of me matching a description that could make my life end in that moment. Like I am one racist person away from no longer breathing. Whoa. Like that that reality is something that is so, so starkly in front of me today. Yeah. And in this current climate that I, I could do everything right and I still wouldn't be here. Like that is like the, the hardest part about it yeah. is that we can have the conversations with our kids. Right. We can follow every rule and regulation and Death can still happen to someone who's innocent, and if it's not filmed, we may never know about it. Right. right. So that is just like baffling to me that it is 2020, and my mother still lived through the civil rights movement and was young, and she remembers the day that Martin Luther King died. Wow. For me to be able to touch a generation where her life was so much differently than mine mm -hmm. is something that is, it has to, it has to shift. It has to stop. Yeah, and I feel like it starts within people's homes. Yeah. 
and not just black homes because we already know what's happening, right. yeah. but within white homes yeah. and having the hard conversation with your white kids yeah. mm -hmm. and showing them the scary reality that is right now, but having them starting the change, being yeah. the change. Yeah. Yeah. And because everything, you don't, you're not born with a racist heart. Yeah. You're taught. Wow. Yeah. So you can be taught to love people. Yeah. You can be taught love yeah. because you get it from your parents. Yeah. And that's it. Whether it's just a mom or just a dad or both of them, it starts with them. Yeah, and it's it's not about like it's not about being not being a racist. It's yeah. about being against, against racism. It. It's mm -hmm. about being anti-racist. Yes. Good. Yeah. And so like that's I feel like that's such a huge thing too because a lot of people maybe white people will say like, hey, like I have a black friend, I love my black friends, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not a racist, but yeah. I think like wh where we're at and where we should have been a long time ago mm -hmm. is we need to be anti, we need to be against right. racism, yeah. like openly and loud, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. actively against racism, yeah. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like, that's another thing too, you were talking about talking about in your homes, it's like just, you know, if, if you're against racism, which, you know, you mm -hmm. need to be against racism, like yeah. openly talk about that in mm -hmm. your house, about, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. about what happened, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like talk about why that's not okay. Yeah. Um, because I think it's more than just being not a racist. Right. Yeah. It's about being against and racism. Against it. You know mm -hmm. I mean? yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Gilan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just sorry. gonna say, and recognizing privilege too. Yeah. 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 You know right. what I mean? Recognizing privilege that, um, yeah. that I have, that you guys right. don't have. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's yeah. a real thing. And yeah. the reality is that if I, um, if I go to the store, Alejandro can't go to the store the same way I go yeah. to the store. Gianna yeah. can't go to the store the same way I go to the store or a bank or anything yeah. else like that. That's yeah. a true thing that exists and it yeah. exists because of a long history of um, just systemic problems. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think like acknowledging the privilege and being yeah. very actively anti-racist, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean, are, are both huge things uh, yeah. that would need to be mm -hmm. talked about. I'll ask you, Gianna, as a mom, you know, you just mentioned teach your kids. I would love to talk about that. Like, we got a lot of parents yeah. and parents of kids that are not black. Yeah. I mean, obviously, talking to your kids about what, what it would look like to, to just be a black person in a, you know, a world that has discriminated against them in the past, that's one thing. But there's a lot of people listening who have white kids and whatever, or, you know, kids that are non-black. Yeah. How do you teach them? You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what? I, that's my family, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And before I answer that, I want to bring it from the perspective of a black mother. Um, I have a friend. She lives. She lives in our our city, and and she she made a post um, with her son's face, and and just to sum it up, she she remembers the day that the doctor told her that she was having a boy, and her heart completely sank. Mm. Not because she didn't want to have a baby boy, but because she was having a black baby boy. Mm. And a black mother should never feel that, wow. ever. Just like a, a, a white mother, when you hear you're having a little boy, your heart doesn't sink, you get excited. Mm. You should be so excited for whatever God has given you. Mm -hmm. But not that she wasn't going to love this child. She was now scared for this child as soon as she found out. Mm. She was already scared because she was having black children, because right. she is black, her husband's black. But the fact that, that bringing a life into this world is something that you have to second guess, mm -hmm. and once it's done, it's done type thing, that should never be for anybody, yeah. ever. And so along with teaching your white kids the privilege you have, being anti-racist, and how to teach them is showing them things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Showing, and I know, I know you don't want to show graphic videos to a child, I'm not ridiculous, but, but being real and being plain with them because this is a real and it's a plain issue. Right. And they need to treat people the way that God would treat people. Right. And, and at this point in time, it's the black lives because if black lives are not mattering, all the other lives can't matter right. in the same right. way. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. It's that's, that's like, 
I think you kind of just touched on Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to talk about that because yeah. I feel like not everybody like understands or grasps that concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not because they don't want to understand or grasp that concept. Yeah. It's because maybe they're not educated yet or don't mm -hmm. understand. But it's like yeah. it's it's really it's pretty simple to understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, of course, and and everybody's seen the memes go around social media of yeah. like the the he you know Jesus leaving the ninety nine for the yeah. one yeah. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the if the house is on fire, yeah. Yeah. all the other houses yeah. are important. But like yeah. the the firefighters need to address the house, house that's on fire. fire. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not because the other ones don't matter. It's right. because that house is on yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like everybody has seen all those memes, but it's mm -hmm. like um, understanding Black Lives Matter. It's yeah. not all lives. All lives do matter, of course. But yeah. I think it's like you can't. You don't have to like suppress all lives to acknowledge that Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like it doesn't yeah. have to become this issue that disappears because we're yeah. addressing yeah. this issue yeah. Yeah. yeah so i think like you touched on that i just think that's so important because some people they don't understand that just because they don't understand that or yeah. it's like just the education that's involved with yeah. it yeah. or whatever just still kind of grasping that yeah but like i, I don't know that's I, I just think that's important to touch on and to be honest at the beginning of this i mean obviously not the beginning beginning but like once this stuff started surfacing i was like oh well i'm a christian so like all lives matter i love everybody yeah. That's, that was my thought process on it. And then once I like dialed back mm. and realized like the problem at hand, it's not that God doesn't care about every single person, yeah. but there's an issue at hand that has to be handled. Yeah, right. And it's with the black lives. Yeah. And it's funny if you're bringing that up, like the, the idea of a black man saying that black lives matter. Hmm. Right? Immediately you're met with well, that's a, if you didn't know me and, and I said that, it'd be far easier for you to say, okay, he's a member of the black community. He is expressing the pain that happens to the black community. Mm -hmm. um, but if we didn't have, if we had a relationship, you could hear my, my cry. Mm -hmm. You could hear the pain mm -hmm. that was in my voice. You can say like, I need your help. Mm -hmm. I need you to show up for me. I need right. you to fight for me mm -hmm. because to say all lives matter in a way of just quieting my voice when yeah. I say, I just need help. Yeah. Right. And I need help for right. you because the difference is when a white man or a member of the, the non-black community say, says that black lives matter, then people pay attention to the fact like, oh, so yeah. this, may, this has value now right. because someone else said it. Right. Yeah. And that is the world that we're living in. It doesn't make it right. Right. It doesn't make it okay, but like, the ne it's necessary mm -hmm. for you as a pastor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a white pastor, to get Black Lives Matter right, and to be able to vocalize it and defend it because right. you are a pastor and you're shepherding black people. Right. And if you're going to stand up for us, we're going to stand up for you. Right. We may be getting flack for not going to black churches. Mm -hmm. We're going to a church that is going to be following a man from Chowchilla, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that... It was raised on a dairy that loves people and wants to learn and understand instead of going to a black pastor that just knows everything about us already. Right. We can get flack for that, but we're going to battle for you in all situations. Right. Because we love you and we know your heart. Yeah. So that's why we want you to know ours. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we can easily fight together yeah. because it's the same cause. Yeah. When, when it's everyone else fighting for us too, that's when the change starts. Absolutely. It can't be just us because they've heard us for hundreds right. of years. Yeah. They've heard us. They've right. seen us. They don't care. Right. And we, we can only go as a community so far by ourselves. Yeah. And so like <laughs> we need, we need yeah. the white voices. Yeah. We need the Mexican voices. We need everybody. Too. I mean, for me to think that anybody, we could be sitting here and that someone would ever have a problem with someone to say black lives matter. Yes, they matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's not be afraid to say black lives matter. Yeah. 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 And like, even as we think about people that are tuning in today, and this is what I love about Christians that can go, listen, we need to take care of the one. Because yeah. um, we've got, you know, we've got police officers, right? Yeah. And people that attend our church that are God-loving yeah. Jesus people. Yeah. And even in that context, we can say, yeah, but this is an issue right now yeah. mm -hmm. that takes priority that we need to address. Yeah. 
and it's been going on for way too long yeah. mm -hmm. and there's been too many injustices yeah. and I don't think they have to compete with each yeah. other yeah. but there is a sense that we need to take care of this really important issue of injustice yeah. right now now's yeah. the time it's yeah. too late yeah. Yeah. but yeah. it's now's yeah. the time yeah. yeah yeah I think it's really important that you said that it's been going on too long because that's exactly what like I'm feeling as a black man it's probably not G is feeling as well is the idea of like how much longer is this going to have to happen yeah. before it comes to an end, mm -hmm. right, you know? Yeah, and George, like, you were talking about addressing the, uh, like, the injustices need to be addressed, and I, like, we were having a conversation before, we were having a conversation before this, I mean, all of us really, just about, like, I think that education is such a huge piece of mm -hmm. that, like, um, the injustices being addressed, sometimes they're not addressed properly because of, like, a lack of education, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so, like, um, for me, I know, like, I, I want to, like, listen and learn, but also, like, be active and, and yeah. read and learn what I can about yeah. what's happened for 400 plus years, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I know we talked about just the education that needs to come. For some people, I think, yeah, it's, you know, it's like they need to, they need to get to that education and then they're going to start addressing it the way they need to be, yeah. which we should have all been doing for a really, really long time. Yeah. But it's like some people just um, don't fully understand that yet. And it's like, I know that I'm like super passionate to do whatever I can yeah. to help in that, whatever way I can, whether it's like posting on social media yeah. or just like listening yeah. and, then, yeah. and then telling someone else what I heard from something yeah. Yeah, or whatever, you know, just like opening the conversations. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. feel like um, that's like, I don't know, like something I love about both of you guys is like, I know that you guys are like so passionate about what's going on right now and also like using your voices to bring change, yeah. bring it, make a difference. Yeah. Um, and so like, I don't know, I think something that's so important is just to talk about the education, yeah. um, what, you know, action steps can be taken, I think, but also just like what needs to be understood, yeah. how posting can help and how like, uh, you know, a lot of this language has been being used, but I love the language of like, being a bridge mm. yeah. or e even, you know, I always use language of uh, tearing walls down, not yeah. building walls, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. think that that stuff yeah. is so huge because like, um, yeah, you know, and we talked about this the other day, I'd love for you to just like, just chime in on that, yeah. you know, because I think, it's ex I think it's really, really important to begin your, all of our like own personal journey of ex examining experiences, right? Because I think it's really, really difficult for people that are not, not black to truly understand the experiences that we're talking about because they've never felt them. They've never, they may have never seen them. Right? Mm -hmm. They may be out there actually looking and trying to fight racism and trying to be present and trying to sh show up and stand in front of their brothers and sisters, but the experience has never happened around them, right. which has them consider the fact that, well, if I've never experienced it, that means it must not be happening, right? right? And then when you have a black man say, I'm said, yes, this happened to me here, 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 here. It's really, really hard for you to consider like the fact that why would there be fear between you and a police officer when every time you see a police officer, you know that they're there to aid you. Hmm. You don't have an experience that's gonna cause you to think otherwise. There's no calculations within your mind of like, how fast was I driving? Did I pay my tags? Did I, did I roll a stop sign? Did, was I playing my music too loud? Mm. Was I, did I look the wrong way before looking mm. the other way? Yeah. Like there's no experience or like angst within you because that is not what your life has been, mm. right? So when you look at that, I even compare it to like the Holy Spirit, right? If people have not experienced the Holy Spirit, or have not experienced the grace of God, right. when I speak about the grace of God that transforms literally every single mm. aspect of my life until they taste it and see that it's good, it's hard for them to go there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's right. hard for them to say like, yes, mm -hmm. that is miraculous, powerful, resurrection power that lives within you mm -hmm. unless you tap in and experience right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you think about like posting, right? Yeah. Um, and sharing an experience. Like I have never posted more on my Instagram story than I have <laughs> yes. the entirety of my life in this last <laughs> six days, yeah. right? Um, and it was because I was seeing so many videos that were speaking about my experience. Right. Hmm. I saw so many videos hmm. that 
were so spot on to the pain I was feeling, to the life that I've lived, to the fears that I have, that I wanted to have an opportunity to share that to other people because in that moment, I didn't have the strength to share it. Wow. I didn't have the strength, I did not have, I did not have the ability to get in front of a camera and try to express what is going on within my soul. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't have that strength, I, I even told my wife, I was like, I don't, I, I do not have the strength to go forward today. I do not have the ability to be helpful, mm. to be joyful, to be who I am, having called and created to be. <laughs> because the experiences were just flooding me and it was overwhelming. Wow. And when people go and can see that, it can help them understand something different. It, and that's the, that's, that's the reason. It's not to, I don't, if you cry for me, that's great. I don't, I don't want you to hand anything to me. I don't need to be, I will go and get it the right way, right? Hmm. The handout's not what I'm looking for. It's for you to help people understand like this hurts me so deeply. Mm-hmm. And I know if you're following me, you care about me in some way, right? right? So let me share that experience and help you learn a little Can bit. Can I just say too, real yeah. quick, that's been helpful for me just in my processing is with d- people of all over, you know, all over yeah. the spectrum from political to whatever, um, you know, cause people will hear something like black lives matter and they yeah. think, oh, it, you know, it means, yeah. means this. And then some people will say, oh, well that, that, that means that you're promoting black above everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I just want to get to the heart of that because that's not what we're saying. I mean, what I've heard over and over again is I'm trying to, we're talking about education and we're talking about learning. The fear is that it's like, what you just said was so powerful because you are not saying, some people take it as like, we're trying to elevate like black above. And it's like, no, let's see it as we're trying to catch up. Yeah. Like this, let's let's get equal rights yeah. or equal yeah. experience yeah. or equal justice. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's important yeah. to clarify. That we was helpful just want for me. What you have, yeah. exactly. And that matters. Uh, let me tell you something that happened today. I mean, I, I was riding my bike. Yeah. I'm out riding my bike, and even how we ride bikes going to be different. Yeah. I took a shortcut across Clovis North Campus, and I saw all these golf carts because I don't know if it's security staff or maintenance staff. And not a part of me feared riding my bike across that campus. I, I rode across and I said, if they look at me, I'll just smile and go. Yeah. And they will not say a thing to me. Yeah. I know that to be true. Yeah. Yeah. Is that not some sort of privilege that you would not feel? Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that right? And that's yeah. something that people yeah. need to know that like in our whiteness, sometimes we don't even realize that all it takes is a smile and a thing. Yeah. And I'm, I've got a free pass. Yeah to do something that was not harmful. I literally was just trying to take a shortcut. There's not a lot of people there yeah. you know, on, on campus is closed, but there's maintenance staff. But that's like something that you don't even have the, yeah. the you're like thinking, I gotta not break any yeah. rules uh-huh. in case someone chases yeah. me down. Yeah. Yep. And I, this is, I'll be really honest, yeah. this is something I'm barely learning yeah. of what that, and the reason why, I didn't, correct me if I'm wrong, when you guys say, hey, learn the privi- privilege, yeah. it's so that, not just so we can be like, oh, guilty, yeah. I feel guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so I can do something yeah. to help you feel so good. a better sense of, of fairness, yeah. right? Of just life as yeah. it could be lived yeah. without yeah. injustice, yeah. right? Without you getting treated different yeah. than yeah. me. That's yeah. Exactly yeah. Yeah. And then along with the education thing, like more practical, now is a great time to be learning, obviously, but because of the tools that we have now. Mm. And like, you know, you've seen all over Instagram what people are posting or on Facebook or whatever. Read those posts and read people's hurts, you know? Whether you are in a position right now of not understanding or maybe not even agreeing, put yourself in a position to be open Mm -hmm. because there's a reason people are feeling the way that they're feeling. Because when they see the videos of George Floyd, they see their brother. They see themselves. Right. The, he was crying out for his mom. Wow. You know, like imagine you crying out for your mom. Gosh. You know, it's that, and that's huge. You know, there's movies on Netflix. There's, yeah. 
There's movies on, on Amazon Prime. They're, they're everywhere. But people are looking at them as, oh, it's just a movie. It's not. It's real life. Yeah. It's real life. Yeah. It's really yeah. happening. Those things you're seeing in movies are really yeah. happening. Yeah. And that's black people trying to bring it to light, but a little more tasteful for, mm -hmm. for the white man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think blinders need to come off. And comfortable has to go away. Yeah because this is uncomfortable for everybody involved. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, right. but you can't grow yeah. in comfortable. Yeah. You can't change in comfortable. Yeah. And, and so like, I don't know, like, and even with reaching out to black people, I've noticed a lot of people are like, well, I want to reach out to my black friends, but I'm nervous I'm going to offend them or whatever, yeah. or, or I've tried and then I've got scrutinized yeah. by another yeah. black person or, someone who's not even black, but is all for this, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so what do I do? My personal stance, I don't, yeah. I'm not sure about yours, try. Mm -hmm. If you're trying, that speaks so huge. That's one person that may not agree with you, but you're trying yeah. because you want to see the change. You want to see the difference. And as black people, we shouldn't be yeah. hidden people uh, for doing what it, if it doesn't look like the way that you as a black person would do it, mm -hmm. just understand that white people, there are people trying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And at least you're saying something. Yeah. And you talked about reaching out, G. I wanted, mm -hmm. like, bro, you the other day, I don't know, four or five days ago or something, you were saying you've been posting more on social media yeah. than you've mm -hmm. ever posted, right? Yeah. Following all of those posts, and I can't, I literally can't imagine what you guys were feeling following yeah. George Floyd's death. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. impossible for me to, me to imagine that. Yeah. Um, but so you were posting about what it has been going on yeah. for a really long time, but you followed it up later with a post mm -hmm. that I want you to talk about a little yeah. bit. Cause it was like, you said, you said basically help me. Cause you yeah. said something like basically reach out to me. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I love you. Yeah. I think is what you said. Yeah. Talk, yeah. I'm just curious. Like, cause mm -hmm. you, you have obviously like, a ton of pain in that moment yeah. and then you you get on you hop on instagram and yeah. basically open yourself up yeah. i'm here i love yeah. you talk yeah. to me kind of thing so yeah. um i believe it was the regardless of what side you're on on this issue specifically know that no matter what side you're on i love you and more importantly jesus does right? mm -hmm. i'm good. here i'm not going anywhere reach out to me so we can have this conversation right um and I'm gonna go in depth with that. I think there's something about comfort that we need to address a little bit more is that yeah. Jesus never called you to be comfortable. Yeah. It was not part of the Christian walk. It's not part of the Christian experience. It says bear your cross. It says die daily. Mm -hmm. Like there is nothing comfortable about being a Christian. So if you were worried about your comfort when it comes to reaching out to someone and how they may respond back to mm. you, you need to put that aside and understand that I need to get uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Because the only way that we are going to grow as a church as a society, mm -hmm. as a community, if we are willing to get uncomfortable for someone who may be losing their lives. Mm -hmm. We can't put our comfort before that. Right. And it's just not, it's just, it would be unfathomable for me to say that you were worried about the clout that you have on Instagram over the pain that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So you stayed out of the conversation, so you stayed on the sidelines, yeah. right? Yeah. And even with the posts that I put, it's understanding that we have to go through this together. We have to walk through life together and we are gonna go far further together than we could ever go apart. Mm -hmm. So if we separate the black wow. community from wow. every other person's community, there is no way that we are ever going to achieve the things that we need to achieve. That people have died, that people have been hung on tree, they've been dragged through the street, and we still are fighting the same battle today. Yeah. Those, those stories are still relevant today. Right. People died so I can have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. That's why I vote. Right. Like, people marched through the South, and there's a man that got shot in the South two, two weeks ago. But hmm. even in the midst of all of that pain, if I, I can feel that so deeply, yeah. because I feel it that deeply, but I want you to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. 
I want you to be a part of it. I want everyone to link arms together because when yeah. our voices come together, they're loud, they're stronger. Mm. It's like the difference wow. between having a solo or having a choir, wow. right? That wow. same message is gonna impact differently wow. to the entirety of the people that hear it. That's Man. Right? Like that same approach is what we need so that my children, when they're 31 years old, doesn't have to be sitting in the same chair having a conversation. Yeah. Right. And if I don't open up my life to have that conversation, mm. I don't know who's gonna make, make room at the table, if not for right. me, right? And that's the challenge is like, if you are not willing, if you wanna see change, make room at the table. Right. You have, you, have, you have to do it. No matter if it feels like you have to pull out the chair, no matter if it feels like you have to lay out the tablecloth, no matter what you feel like you have to arrange for someone to come to the table, set it up and let them come. Mm. And then you can teach them because if we are together and we're walking through this together, right. you're, you will start to experience what I experience. Wow. You will start to see what I see. Mm. You'll feel what I feel. And then you can speak about it. Right. Because the relationship is what is important. If you think mm -hmm. about what Jesus did, religion keeps people away from relationship, right? Mm. Jesus came down to earth for the relationship that he wanted to have with mankind to reconcile us to himself. Right. Right. That same attitude that we need to have when we want to be reconciled to Christ, that is the same thing. We have to be like Jesus and say, right. let me invite you so good. to something that is going to shift your perspective and we have to be willing to do it for other people. Like that is like the key to that post. And that is like the importance because there's no way, like there's no way. Can I, I just want to have a second just to encourage um, so, uh, people in our congregation who might fall to be on the side of being people like me, okay? Yeah. yeah. So I've had conversations with different people. It's like when stuff happens, that's really hard emotions flare up right yeah. Yeah. so there's a lot of different posting yeah. people will post up take it down yeah. they'll post and i just want to acknowledge too that like half our crowd also isn't on social media yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, and yeah, so it's right. bigger yeah. than social yeah. media yeah. it's social. it's it that's why relationship yep. in real life yep. matters yep. Yeah. Yeah. um but what i want to just as a pastor say and i've had to even tell myself this because like say it's a, a black person yeah it's, this event recently happened yeah. and social media is blowing up yeah. and like as a person like me getting on social media because I don't feel what you feel yeah. I'm like it's depressing to get yeah. on social media yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. but I want to just speak to that person in, a, in a, for one of just like uh, the first thing is, is, is what I have to remind myself is one if you don't agree with everything it's okay, you have to realize when people go through something hard, give them space for emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you agree or not, as a pastor, like that's why I always wanna say, you know, if someone goes through something and then they, they do something I do or don't agree with, yeah. I wanna give space without judgment yeah. because you're yeah. going through something yeah. that's emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're so quick to be like, I disagree. I di you know what I mean? And it's like, well, just sit back and go, speak. Yeah. Because you're hurting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, isn't yeah. that that emotion? I mean, I had emotional yeah. conversations with people yeah. and three days later, they're more, uh, maybe more, um, moved mm -hmm. past just yeah. feeling, but like they've yeah. thought more about it yeah. and they're thinking and it's yeah. like, okay. But in those moments, like, don't just ignore or whatever and be like, it's too, like, for me, it's easy to just ignore it. Go, no, I have friends that are hurting. And so I'm not going to be quick to judge yeah. if I agree or agree, disagree. Let's not even have that conversation. Yeah. Let's just allow for pain to express yeah. itself yeah. for a minute, yeah. right? And that's the yeah. grace that God calls us to have yeah. on people, and that's the grace that he pours on us. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> I mean, to talk about the situation, no wonder people are doing things that we wouldn't normally do, mm -hmm. busting down targets and mm -hmm. doing things that are not, okay they're not okay but how it's you can't sit back and tell someone how to respond because exactly. even as black people he feels it differently i feel it differently the next black person feels it differently yeah. and not that i condone any of that i would do it in to i'm doing it in a totally different way yeah. 
but you can't tell people how to respond. Yeah. And arguments is not the right way to handle that, right? Yeah. I mean, just fu hate fuels hate. And yeah. if you just like, right. ah. So, I, you know, it made me think about, I had this deep thought and it, and like, I don't even know how appropriate, but I want to be real. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, as I was thinking, cause you know, again, when you take about, you know, talk about a white person yeah. and you see looting, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first yeah. thing is, is to be like, look what you're doing. Look at like, yeah. and, and then it's not about the issue anymore. Now yeah. it's about this. Yeah. And so we're quick to condemn and I'm with you. Like, I don't think any of that is the appropriate or helpful or right yeah. response. And yeah. none of us here condone that. Yeah. But where you as a Christian are not quick to pick up your stone, yeah. where I had to sit back, I had this moment after talking with you because I, again, just how my spirit connects to your yeah. spirit yeah. and we do ministry and life together and we have this relationship and conversation that I had to tell myself, what if I'm in a place where that was my brother? What would I do? Like, what if that's my, my son? Like, I couldn't even begin to express what kind of wickedness could come out. Unholy response. So I think it's when you have that kind of empathy that literally puts yourself in a moment, in a place, and go, what if someone put their knee on my brother's neck? There is no telling, nobody telling the kind of sin that could yeah. come out. Yeah. So let's address the knee on the neck. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's where I'm yeah. like, because I had, but I had to empathize yeah. as best as I could, yeah. putting my own family in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I think if we do that, then we would, we would get to the real heart of this yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and go, no, dude, like we got to, we, we got to take care of the real issues here long term. Yeah, long term understand how we got there right because I like this is a singular event but I remember Trayvon Martin mm. right I remember Eric Gardner yeah. I remember Oscar Grant I remember every single one of these these black lives that were taken that were looted prematurely mm. right and if we're going to address the system and we're going to address the things that happened beforehand, then we look at what was their life like at home? What do they have parents at home? What does their education look like? Do they have these opportunities? Do you have all of these things that are going to allow them to express themselves differently when they get to a moment of pain? Because I know pain. I have gone through a season of pain that would cripple people, mm. right? But... I, I can't have judgment for someone else who's expressing their pain differently. I just know that I don't think it's going to further the movement, right? right. But I understand the pain. Right. Yeah. And if I didn't have Jesus, my pain expression would look far different. Right. Right? And that's really, right. really key to, to get and to understand because it's just so, it's heavy. People are hurting, 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 hurting. And I want to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you guys, I mean, there, maybe there's more in that conversation, yeah. but at some point I, 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 uh, I want to talk about Jesus and, you know, how in your own lives, the, the yeah. faith aspect, I mean, how you just mentioned how without Jesus, this yeah. is a whole, whole different and how you yeah. handle this. Yeah. Um, so I watched this movie, Just Mercy yeah. last night and, you know, it was incredible, uh, your husband pointed this out to me uh, and, uh, about the black community, because in this community is a, is, a, is, a, is a man who is falsely accused in prison in the movie, and I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody, but it is a real life story. Yeah. Uh, but in the middle of all their trial, they're still clinging to God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Beniah was pointing this out to me. He was just like, it's amazing how the black community will cling to God, even in the difficulty. That's why yeah. some of the great songs yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. gospel yeah. music is about clinging yeah. to God yeah. in the midst of it. I just I mean that is something that is so beautiful and I'm just gonna as a white person cap on the white community just for a little bit yeah. Yeah. because we're so quick I don't know if it's spiritual privilege yeah. to be mad at God yeah. not cling to God yeah. Yeah, yeah. when things don't go our way I'm one of those persons yeah. who is mad at God why yeah. because I just expect God to do what I say yeah 
versus think about the cultural difference yeah. of a black community that goes through it but clings to God. There's something yeah. so beautiful about that kind of faith. Yeah. This is why when you mentioned earlier, we need each other. Because one of the things that he went on to say, Benaiah did this morning, he said, you know why the devil is attacking the black community and even segregating the church? Because if we came together, yeah. he said, there's so much beauty yeah. about the black community that could offer in yeah. compatibility, yeah. in harmony yeah. with the white church, that if it was no longer white and black church, but we were just the church yeah. together, yeah. the beauty of both best that would come together, yeah. Yeah. that would be an unstoppable force, right? Among yeah. every other race as yeah. well. Yeah. But, but the, the enemy is attacking that yeah. segregation yeah. because if we come together, the, the force yeah. is unstoppable. Yeah. yeah, I think as we consider like the power of clinging on to Jesus in moments of turmoil is something that, like you said, like the black community gets pretty well out of necessity. Hmm. If you think about segregation in the church, the reason why it was segregated is because we weren't allowed to go join the white people in the first place. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you have collective pain gathered together and we are resting upon Jesus as the only one who will be our savior, overcomer, Messiah, when we are looking and seeing nothing but brokenness day in and day out, day in and day out. That is in the DNA of our culture is to cling mm. um, because we like at the fear of speaking for every black person in the world, but we understand that tomorrow is definitely not promised for us. Mm. My wife has to worry about if I'm going to come home and mm -hmm. be worried about if I'm going to interact with someone that's going to think less of me, make a snap judgment about me, and she'll be a widow. Right. Like, that is the, the nature of this community. And knowing that we've seen Jesus get us through other things mm -hmm. that were things that we never thought we would get through. Right. And he's faithful then, so he's going to be faithful now. And I've said right. it time and time again that God doesn't waste pain, right? And the pain that we have felt is deep yeah. over multiple generations. But in the midst of those multiple generations we have taught, we've been seeing, we've learned um, and heard the stories that we shall overcome, mm -hmm. that God will do a work and we just have to talk to the, our cousin, our uncle, or our grandmother to hear about right. it, you know? Right. Um, and I think it's something that we go through, like, the entirety of the church as we approach the church and we talk about the capital C church. Um, it says in 1 Corinthians, when we speak about the different aspects of the body, like the hand is a job of hand, but it needs the eye and all of those parts. If one part of the body is hurting, then every part of the body mm -hmm. should be hurting, right? Mm -hmm. It should be so simple for us as Christians to see there is the members of our family are in pain. So I need to figure out how to help them through that pain. It can't be something that I just cast aside. Right. 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 And when you think about like casting aside, it comes to that point of like, like silence, right? Your silence is deafening because we're watching. Hmm. I'm, I was watching every single member of my, my, <laughs> all my friends group, all the people that I follow. I'm like, are they with me in this moment, hmm. right? Are they willing to get a little bit uncomfortable yeah. to go and say, this is not right. Hmm. And even if you're not on social media, because I understand there's people in our church that are not on social media. Um, you have to understand that you having a conversation with someone at your workplace is you using your voice hmm. with you reaching out to a person of color that is even a black person who is inside your inner circle not just a random acquaintance that you have down the street that's your gas station attendant no nothing like that somebody that you claim to be your friend you love that you would go invite to your house for a backyard barbecue yeah. that person you reach out and tell them I'm thinking about you and I'm praying about you. And if you don't have that person in your life, you need to consider getting a person like that in your life. You need to go outside of your wow. circle. You need to go outside of your community and be willing to go and befriend someone. The excuse that you are not good with making friends is not okay in this situation. You need to be willing to say, I need to go de de develop new skills to go and fight this. Because we are not, this, this is not a time as the church to be silent or absent. 
because your absence and your silence are both opportunities for me to not have my life anymore. Wow. And that is something that we have to like get overall. Mm -hmm. There are steps that you can take Mm -hmm. and it does not need to be social media, but it needs to be something Hmm. because I need to know, and you could probably even speak about this in a different way. Who, if I am blessed to have children, who are my kids safe around? Right. Who, who can I know that if something is going to happen around, say you, I'll know that you are going to stand up for my kid and say, no, no way. That weapon shall not prosper here, especially when I'm here. Right. Right. Like, I can't just do that everywhere. Right. I need to know, we need to know we are in a safe community. So when our pastor says something about the situation that we're in and addresses the injustice that we have been enduring, it knows that we're safe with you. Mm. And if your pastor isn't doing that, if your community isn't doing that, if that is a situation and you call that a place of worship and you are a person of color, something needs to change in that community. Yeah. Something needs to shift in that community. And I, I challenge you to be the voice. If you're a white person and you're attending a congregation when there are people that are not speaking up for the black and brown brothers and sisters that you claim to love, that you know that Jesus loves, then you need to use your voice to do something about that. Yeah. Do not say that someone else is going to do it. You need to do it. Okay. Jesus works through individuals. Mm. When you say that Jesus will take care of it, Jesus has opted to use you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. If you claim to know Christ, you have the indwelling seal of the Holy Spirit. So that means this is an opportunity for you to step up to do something about this and not count on someone else. Like that is like, we need the church to understand that so deeply because it's not, it's it's a safety thing. Mm. And Jesus would be it Jesus would step up Jesus would do the work you know yeah he doesn't you're so right and especially like saying Jesus would step up and he would because there's so many cases scenarios where he did and he and he went against what he thought was was right politically you know when he touched the leper why would he do something like that you know or when he with with the I don't know, so many different stories that come to mind like like if you're without sin cast the first stone he could have just prayed for her and said Lord protect her and walked away but no he he got hands on and stood in front of that woman mm. he put hands on on that leopard when he, when he could have easily gotten it because he was also human yeah yeah he is a hands on kind of guy and if we're made in the image of God we should be walking and acting like him as yeah, well. well. And that's good. Like, I think G touched on something. I know a lot of people, I've seen white people say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. Um, which is obviously Great. we're all Christians. We believe in the power of <laughs> yeah. prayer. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also, you know, the awareness that comes with knowing like, hey, prayer is so important. But at the same time, like God calls us to move yeah. and like be active good, yeah. and like uh, raise our voice mm-hmm. and speak for those who are hurting. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think like you touched on that, but like it's actually touching. You know what I mean? It's actually Mm -hmm. moving. It's not just, it's not. So I think some people like they, they're not sure. Oh, when they say, I'm going to pray for you, they Mm -hmm. mean well. You know what I mean? Like in their heart, they're like, man, they're probably praying, you know, and they're probably, um, they're hoping for the best and they love the black community, but Mm -hmm. they don't understand hey, okay, prayer is not enough yeah. in this moment. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Please keep praying, but also yeah. we got to move and we got to act yeah. and do something. As white people, yeah. mm-hmm. lifting our voice, standing up for our black brothers and yeah. sisters yeah. and actually um, asking for and creating change. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, cool. I want to touch on that for a second too because I love what you said. And it's so cliche, I'll pray for you, right? Mm-hmm. And I never want to knock yeah. that yeah. statement. Yeah. Right. The truth is people are just flat out lying. Mm. you don't know how to pray that's your problem Mm -hmm. because when jesus said to pray pray that the kingdom comes Mm. the bible says the prayer of a righteous person has power why Mm. because a righteous person knows when they pray they get in the presence of god and god says do something about it so you're lying if all you say is i'll pray for you you're either not praying or you don't know how to pray because if you're going to get in god's presence he's going to form in your heart to actually do something to fight for the person who has to be fought for So it's just, I'm tired of the cliche, I'll pray for you, but I never want to knock it because I'm like, people who said that's not enough have never seen my prayer list. Mm. 
Because God moves and does miracles yeah. in the lives of people who say, man, when I'm in God's presence, he moves because I take what he tells me and I live it out. Yes. Yeah. And so I think praying, because we had a prayer meeting this week, dude, and power came out of yeah. that. But yeah. it's because we got in God's presence and shut up a little bit and yeah. said, God, we need you. Yeah. And then when you form our, our minds, conform our minds to your word, we go, in your word, Jesus fought for the one who, who couldn't fight for themselves. Yeah. So it moves you if you're really praying. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're lying. Yeah. You're not really yeah. praying. You're just yeah. lying. Yeah. Or I don't know what yeah. your fluffy prayer life is, yeah. but there's no power in it. Because yeah. yeah. praying people are also people who do something. Yeah. Let's look at Jesus. He goes and he spends time with his father. And every single time he does a miracle, he says, I am only doing what my father has shown me what I just told me to right. do, right? Yeah. And when Jesus saw a place of injustice, a, a place of brokenness, mm -hmm. he was moved with compassion. Yeah. Compassion yeah. is an action. Mm. It yeah. urges you to step into a place where you may be hurt, mm. but right. you will do something that's going to stop harm from coming to another yeah. person. Right or transform their life completely when it comes to Jesus. Wow. When Jesus enters into a situation, that situation never looks the same. Yeah. Yep. Right? And so if we, prayer matters, but that action that follows right. after that and the compassion is so key. You can't, you So can't. I wanna, you know, Gianna, a question. Like, so when Jesus says, pray that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, what is the kingdom? Like, what do we find? Because that's what we're supposed to do, right? Bring the kingdom. Because this, everything that we're, we're, we're talking about today has happened because of a fallen kingdom, yeah. a broken world. Yeah. What are we fighting for? Yeah. What's the kingdom look like? <laughs> oh, I'll say this. The kingdom is definitely colorful. Mm, right. and, yeah. and staying on the topic, I hear so many people say that, oh, well, Jesus doesn't see color. Mm -hmm. um, so... I don't see color. And I think that that is the most ridiculous phrase I've ever, mm. ever heard because God created us all different on purpose, different colors. And, and I heard it said in, in a message today that the reason why he did that is so that we could drop our culture and have this kingdom culture rise mm. so that we can trust in God so that we can be the kingdom of God. Right. And that's people who stand up righteously yeah people who have a righteous anger. Yeah. Jesus flipped tables. Yeah. Mm. He, was, he was angry. Yeah. The word I used earlier, he was pissed off, yeah. Yeah. you know? But did he sin? No. Right. The kingdom is a righteous people who are standing up for what is right, who are standing up for Jesus Christ, who are standing mm -hmm. up for the things of God and not looking to what their flesh wants them to do, right. yeah. you know? Yep. We're all broken. Yeah. Right. We're all broken people. And he knows that and he understands that. He created us and he knows us more than we know ourselves. Yes. But to be a part of the kingdom of God is to rise up yeah. right. for what is right. godly. Bring it, bring the kingdom. Yeah. Be a part of bringing the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny, we were talking the other day and it's like, you know, we're restoring, in a sense, what was broken in Adam and Eve in the yeah. garden and all that. And then we're yeah. trying to bring back that peace with God. And it's so interesting to think that, like, even at the root of racism and you go to all this, like, how stupid it really is to think about. Yeah. Because I, I even told you that this, I mean, when we think about it, Adam had some black in him. Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> hey, Adam and Eve, they had to have some of everything in it because we all came from them, right? And then everything got yeah. diversified at yeah. Babel. Yeah. Pride yeah. got in the way and yeah. people spread yeah. out according to, you know, the languages and all that. And now God through the gospel is bringing us all together in the kingdom, right? Yeah. You know, and another thing I think about too for the Christian that, yeah. that needs to be considered is, you think Jesus was white? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in every little kid storybook I've ever had, it was white Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's Middle yeah. Eastern. I guarantee yeah. you, yeah. I, I, I can all but guarantee yeah. his skin was darker than mine. Yeah. And I love that there's no, no biblical reference of what Jesus' skin looked like. Yeah. I love that, like, because yeah. we don't get to know. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get yeah. to know. I think people are going to be shocked in yeah, heaven yeah. when they meet Jesus. Yeah. I want to say something, too. I think, I think that, and I don't know, man, I'm just, yeah. I'll find out in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus sent his spirit yeah. after he ascended to heaven. Yeah. We don't, the spirit doesn't have skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I dare to wonder if he would have sent something with skin on it. It might have been rejected by some. Mm. So the spirit doesn't have skin. So what happens sometimes in our mind is we just formulate Jesus in our own image. Yeah. Well, it's time to get away from that. Yeah. I was talking to my neighbor yeah. today. His name's Stefan. He's a middle-aged black man. I love this guy. Yeah. He is such an awesome neighbor. And, and it's so powerful for me to live next to him and his wife and his family. And my boys to call him Mr. Stefan and sleep every night with the stuffed animal that Mr. Yeah. Stefan yeah. got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this beautiful relationship that I see as kingdom relationship, we, we, we just love each other and we acknowledge that, yeah, we're different, but like, dude, we have the same thing flowing inside of us. And I was talking to him today and, and he said, man, it, like, you know, regardless of whatever people think about color, you know what's the same in all of us? Our blood. Mm. We have the same blood, the, the, what's on the inside. And we tend to separate by what we see on the outside instead of seeing the commonality of what God did on the inside. Yeah. And that commonality is, in, you know, and that's a, a metaphor. Yeah. You know, that's why every single one of us needed Jesus to shed his blood. Yeah. Yeah. He shed his blood because all of us, yeah. no matter what we look like, needed Jesus to shed his blood for us and then be filled with his spirit. And I just think one day when we meet Jesus, there's going to be a lot of people surprised that he wasn't what they thought yeah. he looked like. Yeah. Um, and I would just, you know, speak to that too, you know, and we talk about, you talk about the kingdom is united people from all different kinds. Yeah. One of the things, man, that I don't know how this is going to change, but to think about, you know, I'm thinking about people on the other side of this camera, maybe who don't go to via, maybe they go to another church, they're tuning in and you said, you know, pay attention to your friends of color right now. Like, be learning, be, be reaching out. Yeah. But truthfully, there's some who have no friends, right? Yeah. Maybe they go to a school that's all white, and yeah. then they work at a job that's all white or yeah. all white. Don't you think this is where the church should come in? Yeah. Don't you think that churches yeah. ought to fight yeah. for reconciliation yeah. and relationships yeah. of different race? Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to raise my kids, I want them to be in Bible, uh, you know, learning the Bible or via kids with kids who all look yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. Yeah. Talk about it. Today's our birthday via church. Yeah. Yeah. Point number one when we started this church is we're going to be a church about Jesus. Yeah. He shed his blood for all people. Yeah. Point number two, the church better be filled with all kinds of people. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't fight for that, if yeah. you make up your own Jesus, you'll yeah. end up segregated. Yeah. There's way too many churches just drive down the street and yeah. you'll see all white, all white, all this, whatever. And no one actually makes conscious decisions to go, no, let's, let's build bridges, break down walls, do whatever we got to do yeah. to make a church a church of diversity, especially yeah. in a city that's diverse. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing if you're in a town and it's all one, you know, that's yeah. different. But Fresno? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. If we're not fighting for diversity in churches here, yeah. we're missing the point. Yeah. Because that's where you're going to build relationships yeah. with people. That's going to break down walls. Yeah. And that's, that's when you have to really search your heart, right? Right. And you have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things in you that are opposing to God, mm -hmm. right? And when you look into your heart and you look into your soul, you may see things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's okay. We all look inside of ourselves and see things that we don't like. Mm. But it's when you put the light on it and then you shy away, that's when that's not okay anymore. Mm. You need to shine the light and understand that this is going to be painful for me to learn how to do things differently. It's going to be painful, me to, painful for me to go and walk my life out differently. Um, but I need you to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to be willing to allow the Lord to lead and guide you specifically to how you are supposed to do this. And I, I wanna reach out to my, to my people of color and to my black brothers and sisters. When people are trying to look into their soul and to examine the dust and the cobwebs that are in there that may have caused pain for us, and they take a step to do something different, we need to meet them with grace. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't meet them with grace, it's going to be harder for them to take that next step. And every single baby, every single baby step is progress, mm -hmm. right? Right. When we look at a baby taking steps and they fall, we don't say, how dare you fall? What are you doing, baby? Wow. Get up. You got to keep wow. moving. No, it's like, yo, 
great job. Let's get up and try again. Yeah. That is the way that Jesus looks at us every single time we fail him, right. every time we sin against him. Right. So if we are going to be like Jesus, even when we are in pain, I understand we may be grieving and you may need time to grieve. Mm -hmm. And you need to give your brothers and sisters space to do that. But we have to, once again, meet them with grace. Yeah. Meet them with grace. Yeah, see the kingdom come. Yeah. Uh, as we kind of, you know, bring this, this uh, conversation to a close, you know, you mentioned flipping tables. Yeah. And uh, I had this great conversation with, again, your husband today. who so inspired me. Yeah. Uh, and, he, you know, we were talking about flipping tables because it started where tables, where Jesus, the one time he flipped out was in the house of God. Where it were, there were racial segregation, there was uh, there was injustices happening to people in the outer courts, um, and people were getting ripped off. People who traveled from a long distance, not the insiders, but the outsiders, and that's where Jesus is flipping tables in the house of God. And I've always thought, you know, it always starts in the house of God. Yeah. Where things are going to change is when all white churches say we won't be all white yeah. anymore. And, and all this, and like, yeah, it's one thing if you say, yeah, we're going to have a, you know, a side Hispanic church with a Hispanic pastor, but you don't ever have Hispanic people in your church, yeah. Yeah. you know, or black people. You name yeah. it, right? We've got yeah, yeah. this service, yeah. but we don't, yeah. like, right now we need to break all those walls down. Yeah. And the reason why people don't do it oftentimes is because of money. Yeah. And what did Jesus do? He flipped tables because people wanted people's money. Yeah. And when we start stop serving money, yeah. money and start serving Jesus, yeah. then the church is going to come alive. Yeah. It's going to come alive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to say, too, like, as, I mean, we're closing, but I just, like, personally feel, I, I'm so thankful for both of you guys yeah. because, mm -hmm. like, I think you're, you're in the middle of grieving. You're in the middle of dealing with things that I can't understand, and you're sitting right here yeah. using your voice in the middle of grieving yeah. to talk through the camera to people on the other side yeah. who people who don't understand but want to people who need to hear it uh and don't want to understand but they need to hear it yeah. uh black people of color black people yeah. i mean and you guys are taking time in the midst of grieving sitting here oh, wow. and sharing your yeah. voice so like for me yeah. and this people on the camera but this has happened you guys have been doing this all week yeah. and, and beyond all week. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, like, I just want to honor you guys because I'm so yeah. thankful that you guys are here. I'm so thankful who you are to me. I'm so yeah. thankful that you guys are using yes. your voice. And when yes. I was talking about knocking down walls and building bridges, I see you guys as perfect examples of that. Like, I feel like you guys are knocking down walls and you guys are literally bridge builders, if mm. you will. You know what I mean? So I'm thankful for both of you guys. So. And I think that we have to give honor where honor is due as well. It's like for you, Jordan, to allow us to come to this space and to express and try to educate, enlighten, and give action steps is something that's so special and so mm -hmm. necessary because so often in life you see the voices of the people of color be suppressed and pushed mm -hmm. down. And when you look at that area of oppression, when you using your voice or using your platform to elevate mm. the voices of the oppressed and allow them to explain, mm. it's something that's powerful and that's something that's very special and it's very, wow. it's very much like Jesus. So I want to thank you for, thank you. for allowing this to happen mm. because it's necessary. Mm. It is only the first step. We have so right. much more to do. Right. This is not the end. This is the beginning of a conversation right. because we are going to be a church that does this well, mm -hmm. but we start today and I thank you for being um, open to making that happen. And not even being open, but making sure that it happened. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So for I sure. Yeah. yeah. And I, like I said, I, I want to honor you too. I, I love you guys. I love all three of you. And it is a privilege to get to just be a part of the same family as you guys. Yeah. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for, for having this conversation today. And like I said, man, we all just need lots of grace. Yeah. We need to be, constantly reminded like who Jesus is, that he called us all into his family. No one's worthy. N no, uh, you know, the old song, red, yellow, black, or white, none of us are worthy. We all have been called in by grace. And to yeah. keep that in mind, and then to just keep extending that grace yeah. and fighting for yeah. others to receive yeah. that grace. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to close this conversation. G, if you want to pray us out. or. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We acknowledge that you are the one who can fix this. 
God, we thank you that you're in the midst of everything, even when we don't see it, even if we don't believe it in this moment, God, we have our faith in you. God, we trust you. God, we trust you with our lives. We trust you with our friends and our family. We trust you with all of these souls that are watching today. God, I thank you that your love is shed upon your people. God, that your grace falls. God, I thank you that you are here. God, we worship you and we honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to Via Church Online. For more information about how we're navigating through this time, you can visit our website at viafresno.com slash updates. And if you want to give to the ministry of Via, be sure to check out viafresno.com slash give. And don't forget to check out Via Music's latest single, And It Was Good, now streaming on all platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. We love you guys, and we can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Bye.